y'all welcome back to another Cocker cast man what is going on it's good to be back in the saddle with you bro absolutely Hell bro yeah. getting comfortable uh just want to start out first by saying a huge thank you to everyone who tuned tuned into our freshman debut episode if you will absolutely uh, appreciate a, all the love it was a ton of fun we, we kind of got carried away with uh people who've inspired us along the way in the youtube realm as well as the fitness realm so uh, thank you to everyone who tuned in, man. Seriously, it was, it was our first episode, something we've been wanting to do for a while and transition to, essentially, with the whole kind of podcast setup that we initially got. So thank you. Let's talk about this setup real quick before <laughs> we even dive in. This setup is phenomenal. It's phenomenal. Ever since podcasting really kind of started to take off it's, and like kits were being created just to kind of save money where you don't have to like piece everything out, order everything Absolutely. out. Absolutely. You know, you could explore with kits. I think uh, similar like how cameras, co camera companies do, but the podcast kits were interesting because it like these have everything. You everything, need. and it's so user friendly. Yeah. Super user friendly, <laughs> and like the way the mixing boards were created used to like if there got to a point where like you know there's certain podcasts got like 10, 12 guests on like yeah. you have to get a legit, like you have to be a legit like, audio engineer. Legit, yeah. <laughs> you have to. That's that's when you get to a point where like you're all you always have someone like a Jamie from the Rogan Experience. Yeah, or like a Marty, Marty from the Dope as Usual podcast. Absolutely, yeah. I feel like you you have to implement that in some way just to make sure everything stays structured. And you can like at that point you're obviously like a well renowned podcaster, so you need to not really worry about have that anxiety about the technical. Exactly, aspects you need of things, to just. Right? Have everything set up. Make sure yeah. that you're confident in how everything's going to flow so that the conversation can just be carried and you don't have this lingering thing like, oh, no, I hope the audio yeah. syncs up this time around. Dude, yeah, like midway <laughs> through, you're like, oh, shit. So we ran into some of those yeah. troubles because um, we've used this kit before with, like, some of our training videos, yeah. like the voiceovers, and it was not pretty yeah. at first. <laughs> it was Bro, sometimes, like... I was pulling out my hair. It's like, damn it. Yeah, damn yeah, it. Like, <laughs> getting a like, mad frustration. Sometimes when I really, like, reflect back on, um, you know, some of the initial YouTube content that we dropped, and it's still available, by the way, if yeah, you still watch our there. oldest videos. We, don't, we ain't one of those people, uh, one of those duos where we go back and, like, hide some of our older videos because we're embarrassed of yeah. how shitty the quality was in comparison to what we're able to produce now yeah it's like grow it's just growing pains kind of with anything it's like when you go through a growth spurt sure absolutely and I, I think even more so with like the editing technical aspects it's something that takes time mm -hmm. and it's something where we kind of had the opportunity to get equipment first and so like when you do that there's not like that experimental transition in equipment. It's kind of like you have the equipment. Now, how do we assess and put all this together? Yeah, to what, now you just how have to we put want. everything together. Yeah, and, and like with the got muscle stuff, like sometimes I'll go back and watch it. Got and I look muscle. at like our physiques at that time and like just how far we've gone with like how I just like just in terms of how, how easier and how much better it flows, like it's editing right, videos. Right, and right. Like, you know, it's like. Back then, we couldn't even freaking load the clips to export. No, I remember. You know? <laughs> remember that. Saw, remember that hard drive it came yeah, in. Yeah, I was like, yeah. "What the hell is this? A Game Boy?" Yeah, I know. Like, I was like, "Dude, this, this is all foreign to me." Because <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. like I wasn't like I'm technologically sound with like computers and stuff, but like this is a whole new realm for me. And I was like, yeah. "I can't figure this shit out. I don't know nothing about Adobe Premiere. I don't know nothing about the Adobe yeah. Suites yeah, in general." Yeah, and it's I remember it's like the computer is just like a singular. Yeah, act, yeah. yeah. And I remember there was that one point in time where we we're trying to figure out how to import the oh, clips yeah. just to edit the video just, just to get them on the timeline yeah right? just yeah, to get yeah. them on the timeline and trim them up and put them together and yeah. i was like this is going to be tough tough but we stood committed and uh, thank god for youtube right youtube freaking university bro i know <laughs> we learned everything on there yeah, i got accepted fucking <laughs> no no hesitation bro <laughs> just a search bar just a search bar yeah and, just commit your time to watching some videos. But besides all that, yeah. guys, we want to recap on our weekend because I hate to break it to you guys. If you guys do follow the, follow the fitness content, you know that me and Jace have been cutting for an extensive amount of time now. This past weekend, we had some of our sincere friends over, some friends that we haven't seen in a very, very long time. And um, they came over this past weekend. And unfortunately, we cracked and we fucked up on the diet. We had a full weekend of binge eating and binge drinking. I'll let Jace open up on that, but let's just say it was not fun. It was fun and enjoyable, but we had to pay for the consequences. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And, and up until this point, it's like, I felt like we were like really getting dialed in really as far as in. like, w there gets to a certain point in the cut where it's like, cause I've been, you know, you do this so many times. Like living like a monk. Sure. It's like so repetitive. Right. And then you kind of start to recognize from doing it from previous years, like, oh my gosh, like it's, it's 
get into that point, like yeah. I'm starting to see striations, and you start to like really kind of hone in on what you're doing, and you could see what you could already see what you're gonna you look see like the progress based off previous years, and like the way a cut's going, you could kind of analyze and put things into perspective. And we were at that point where I was like, man, flowing good, and uh, like probably eight to ten more weeks of this, and then the diet can change. We could add some more stuff, and I just like I think. This weekend had to have put us back at least like a week and a half. Absolutely, like a, a, at least a week and a half. Because like when when you're living and and eat, and dieting and training like the way me and Robert are doing it requires every single aspect to be really really dialed in and in place. And like although it's very ext- it's extremely tough for us to do exactly and when we when we uh when you're so dialed in like that with the diet and you kind of deviate from it, yeah. your body does not know how to respond. So. Uh-huh. That's the interesting thing too, yeah. right? Like and like, so I know, like yeah. it was, th- I knew it was just such a bad week that I didn't even step on the scale because I knew I was just going to get discouraged. Yeah. Um, I, I actually weighed in this morning just to see. So I saw um, that weighed in, dude. What's today? Wednesday? Yeah. Wednesday Recording morning. this podcast. Yep. Wednesday. Weighed in Wednesday morning. I was at my weight that I was before our friends came over and I was like, okay, it back must have, to- I, back to nor- like semi normal, but it had to be really bad. Like I, if I have to, estimate what my weight was that Sunday after they left I was probably like 234 233 ish like a like a solid five to six pound gain and I was like oh no you see I didn't weigh myself after but I kind of knew I just knew I knew that it like I had gained around like roughly the six to eight pound range Mm, excuse me but like most of it was water yeah a lot of it's water retention and that's that's why you're kind of able to get back to where you were before so quickly but it's like getting back to that point sucks because there's so yeah, much inflammation like, built up. And then you like, just think about like, okay, if I want to have fucked up this weekend, where would I be at right now? And it's like just a psychological thing. And so now you, you're starting to get in your head and I was questioning myself. I was like, man, is this fitness shit even cut oh out for me? God. Or should I just do, should we just do podcasting and those barbecue? Are, like all this bullshit like, about, but it's like, <laughs> nah, the just, truly thoughts. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The truly thoughts. Yeah. <laughs> I'm never drinking truly's again. I'm probably never drinking period. Unless it's a <laughs> special occasion. Yeah. yeah like like our friends weddings or yeah. something. You know? And like, I consider this past weekend a special occasion, but yeah, it, it, was. It, it did get out of hand. I'm not going to lie. It was from the moment they showed up. We have a friend. His name is Xavier. We call him Bariga. He's like <laughs> one of our best friends. Dearest bro. friends. Like, what? how did you meet him? Football. Football. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. I met him. Like, uh, I think I met him. Was this when he was number 75 playing quarterback for Livingston? Yeah, bro, I met school. him at the All-Stars, at the All-Stars practice. Oh, he was yeah. there from Livingston. But I didn't really get close with him until me, Freshman you, and year. him. Until we, were the, until we were the D line, the D line and the O line. <laughs> yeah, that's how around the time I met him too. It wasn't until that freshman year we got close, or me and you got close also. Yeah, and then we had our uh, boys. Um, well, Christian, our boy Christian, and our boy Jacob. They slid down with them, so it was just like an epic weekend of like just pure partying, pure binge eating, binge drinking. Just a very fun time. Fun time. And although it is very needed, that's what I was about to address is like, although it does have like negative psychological impacts, it, I think there are some positives because now I feel like, okay, I, like I, I kind of reset myself yeah. mentally yeah. and like, I hate to say it, but I think this past weekend introduced us to the new turkey burgers we've been eating for the post-workout meals. Yeah. <laughs> and those turkey burgers are phenomenal. They're fantastic. I think we just like transitioned the seasoning platform mm-hmm. to the ground turkey. And although the, our grill was closed, there's been like a fiasco with the grill. Yeah, this like, apartment complex it, has been a little hectic yeah, the, lately. Yeah, for sure. But not just that, like um, just the the feeling like of shame that we felt. Remember like rolling <laughs> Dude, up? Dude, it was like that one time. Well, well, it was like it was like six. We got yeah, done at the it's gym. Like, it's like six forty five. Like, early. dude, is the pool and all the amenities really closed right yeah, now? Yeah, it's supposed to be open till like not. I think at least nine. At least, right? I'm yeah. pretty sure. And then we pull up. We have all the seasonings. We have all our utensils. We have the burgers. We're like, oh, man, these are about to be fire. We get to the gate. Jay scans the key The key card. Door's not. Tug gates, in. Yeah, like a few gate's times. not opening. So we go to the next one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Man, the coffee's giving me the hiccups. Yeah, man. You got to um, be careful with that, that yeah. Keurig. Yeah, bro. that Keurig. Those Keurig <laughs> hitters, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but he scans in, and one of the gates opens, so I get stoked. I'm like, hell yeah, we're about yeah. to barbecue. This is going to be great, bro. Just just worked out. Yeah, just worked out. Feel good. And then he goes to the second gate to let us into where the grill is. Not Result of the first gate. 
tugging, tug, 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 can't get in. I'm just like, bro, are you fucking kidding me yeah. right now? Yeah. So we had to come back upstairs. But, but that's what I was kind of referring to. Like, I immediately thought in that moment, I was like, dude, these turkey burgers are going to be ass. Hey, but you know? honestly, because you, were, yeah, because you were like, I, I immediately just thought like, let me think about my, my ex- let me think real quick about yeah. my experience with burgers yeah, on the I'm, grill <laughs> when, when you run out of propane. Yeah, and you kid. have to cook them on the fucking stove. Atrocious. It's not good. It's not good. Especially when you're used to having that that grill taste yeah, to it. Because that uh, smoky flavor. Because like burgers, I'd say like 90% of people only season with salt and pepper. Mm-hmm. And like, of course, we like explore a plethora of seasonings for sure. But like the average person that's grilling in the backyard, salt and pepper. So when you and transition. maybe garlic if they're feeling a little bit adventurous. Maybe. And like, so when you transition that to a freaking Rachel Ray skillet pan. Yeah. Not happening. Not happening. But not thankfully. Happening. <laughs> I have this, iron. yeah, I have this killer cast iron, this big ass cast iron thing's heavy and it gets hot. You got to be careful, burn yourself. Yeah. But um, we threw them on that cast iron and they came out phenomenal and we've been eating them for like the past two to three days. <laughs> and it's probably a new staple in the cut with every cut we do because like me and Jace, we started out in this bodybuilding shit, like living that bodybuilding life, like chicken, rice, broccoli, ground turkey and rice. I don't really think about that enough, too, because, like, hey, bro, I... that's where we started. That's that where we started, diet. and I think it's it just... miserable. It was extremely miserable, and I think somewhat that's kind of carried over even after acquiring, like, the modern-day knowledge that we've yeah, acquired. Yeah, I think it's, it's like just, like, a... Psychological... A force of habit. Yeah, I think it's it's more of, like, a kind of, like, an appreciation through the experience. And, yeah. like, kind of we were, like, that last generation yeah. that, like, the early days of YouTube, you know, yeah. that's kind of what you're in immediately introduced to us being yeah. at the time. It you didn't was. have your, like your Greg Doucette's your no. Will Tennyson's like out there popping out or your, uh, Remington's popping out like these anabolic, if it fits your macro meals, it's Absolutely. like chicken, rice, yeah. steak, rice, ground Turkey, rice, yeah. oats, eggs. Yeah. And it's like, like, like when you hear Meadows talk about his like previous days of competing <laughs> and he's like, dude, when I was competing, um, in the nineties, yeah, bro. cans of tuna to shred down to get stage it's ready. Disgusting. Like, that that's, that's some tough. serious commitment. Like, there's no way I'd be no. able to do that. And well, like, and then, no then again, that is like, that's back in the nineties, bro. The 90s. That's like the Dorian Yates era. Yeah, era, era. 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 Yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's like, that's just how dudes were eating because there wasn't much knowledge on like healthy alternatives or how to make your your. Uh, your meals enjoyable right to get lean right and and i think it was one of those things where like i constantly convinced myself back in the day i know you did this too where like in order to like getting lean sucks that's yeah. why nobody does that's it. why you have to suffer with that's your meals. why you have to suffer with your that's meals because it kind of ties into how hard the training exactly. is exactly that's the exact thought and yeah. approach that i had back in the day now i'm glad that me and you don't have that approach because it allows us to kind of experiment and it makes cutting a little more enjoyable yeah as far as like the meals go right and i think back in the day too that's like i think that's what transitioned to like a lot of inflammation leading to injuries is like we were eating very monotonously and we i think we were getting aggravated and frustrated Mm -hmm. to some extent to a certain extent with that approach just not happy to where we know we were taking it out with the splits (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> like the workouts were getting too intense, They're bro. getting hard because we were just angry because it's like, bro, <laughs> I, I, I'm going to finish this fucking work and I have to go home and eat some dry ass chicken and some rice. That's how, that's just, how it was, bro. Off, bro. That's how it was. Like you get done with the gym and you're like, ah, going down Belcher, my lower back's in flame. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, ah, <laughs> yeah. I'm just grunting, all pissed off. I pull up, I slam the pan on the stove. And this was back when we were living at home because we were like fucking 16, 17 years old, still in high school. My mom's like, she comes out of her room like, what's wrong with you? Why are you slamming stuff? And I'm like, Ugh. and yeah. I just, I can't tell her like, because I'm pissed off because I have to cut because she would always just tell me like, you're doing this by choice. Right. Like, right. enjoy it or don't do it. Yeah. J- so, Jace, why are you slamming cabinets? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She's like, boom, 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 boom. Right? You yeah, get exactly. A fucking, you get a Tupperware to like mix the turkey or some shit. Tub aware, more like where tub aware's Where, the, the fucking, fucking lid because you can never find the lid to no. them bitches. They're always scattered a, or somehow they get lost. It's an endless search. And not only that, like I, can, I don't know why, but the Tupperware. Well, I guess we have it too. It's yeah, like yeah. under the silverware. That's under. like kind of a hidden slash designated spot for or, the fucking for Tupperware. Because it's like you can't find it and then you need it. It's like, oh, where is it? Oh, it's yeah. under the forks. But your lower back starts hurting looking for that damn lid. It could be you could be like eight minutes in looking for a lid and you're hunched over. Especially like when you're like saving your p- 
post workout meals and it's just after you've trained your body's already like systemically fatigued and it's just like all these extra movements having to dig through shit it's always at the lower level it's just very very annoying very annoying 100 percent, bro what what i mean this weekend i feel like obviously we explored a lot of it but like what are the foods that throughout each and every cut you've just you miss the most it's like out of nowhere during the day they could just pop on your mind easy pizza burgers sure sure barbecue a it's plethora like a of barbecue three, yeah. yeah yeah that's that's interesting too because like i don't ever crave dessert i don't Mm-mm. ever i don't ever crave i'm not ever like I fuck do i want a plate of cookies yeah like, i don't fuck. crave sweets don't unless crave like sweets. The only time I really crave sweets is when they're like in front of me, like freshly baked brownies. Yeah. Like if I get a whiff of those, I'm like, oh, I start yeah. losing my mind. Yeah. But like on a day-to-day basis, I will catch my, especially during a cut when I'm uh, not allowed to eat these foods because I restrict myself from eating them. Um, like I just found myself thinking about pizza, Mountain Mike's, in and out cheeseburgers, Dude, I don't four know by what it four. Is. Yeah. It's an addiction, yeah. bro. Well, like you start get you start getting flashbacks to those feelings, like before you ate and like unraveling the bag, golving the cheese. You know from what I've been thinking wrapper. about lately, bro? Like on this cut <sighs> is uh, when I first moved here to SAC, and me and you were eating out every meal. Every meal. I, for whatever reason, I've just been reminiscing on those days. I'm like, I wish I could eat like that yeah. again. But dude, then, that week, I like literally, like I think towards the end of the week, I had to sleep on my back. Yeah, because like I couldn't, I couldn't sleep on my sides because like my gut would like wave. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I, because that, I so mean, this full. was at the point where I tried to like mini cut during that time. Remember, I was telling yeah, you about yeah, that. Yeah. Like I tried to mini cut, and it was a right around Jesus Christ. Because I was able to train, although quarantine like severely messed up my training. Uh, I started training in like mid May. I think kind it's mid May. I think that's when you had told me because yeah. I wasn't living here, so, like, I wasn't able to train because everything back home in Atwater was shut down. Right. Like, there's right. no gyms for me. And I remember you told me, it was like, bro, when you moved down here, I found a gym. And that's when it was that fitness, that, system. Yeah, fitness system. Yeah. I was like, no shit. Right, yeah. And th- so I was training there, but I was, like, super off and on because I was visiting my parents a lot during the mm-hmm. time. Um, and I was training in the garage gym at home, so there wasn't much. Dude, those but I was garage st- gym workouts were sick. Rough. They, they're, they're, they're rough. They're rough, but they're sick. They're sick. And the only reason they were sick is because after me and you would train in the garage, we'd go drive down to Modesto, California, and hit up our dearly beloved Doc's Barbecue. Dude, I <laughs> honestly, like, I think about that place so much, like, not even on a cut, like, a no, bulk and yeah. cut. It's just like, a phenomenal spot it's bro. one of those it's like, it's i hold one of that the, place close to my heart very close to your very close to heart yeah very close to heart and i think it's just kind of how much we appreciate the experiences we have mm-hmm. there like it's it's one of those things where it's you know you're it's rare in your lifetime that you're gonna i mean unless you're the fucking man exactly you know what i mean but it's like r- walking up to a restaurant and you feel so comfortable and at home exactly. like that's such a special thing that's it's like very, lost in yeah, time exactly like, and it's a very that's perfectly said. Docs is a very homey feeling when you pull up. It's like as so soon as, like even though it's in a rough location, yeah. like it's in a very rough location. Very rough. But like that, you know, they ask you how your family's yeah. doing. There's conversations about things that are are very like exactly personal. And I remember when we went there and we had told him that we drive from Atwater. He's oh, like, oh dude, man, it was we, different. I think he threw us in some extra cornbread. I was like, yeah. hell yeah, Doc, you're the man, bro. Yeah, I did. Dipping that cornbread inside my barbecue sauce with the mac and cheese going, oh dude. And he gave, he gave you like, oh, there were so like bad. the little mac and cheeses, but he upgraded us to, and we got double, double. of the Tupperware. And this like is the where, large size. yeah, and this is where you could fucking, Here's like the tub height. You could you could go like a strip, right? So right. it's like a strip you eat and you make it into like a bowl shape so the pulled pork is easier to yeah, smash. So you can you mix. can put the pulled pork inside the <laughs> mac. You have to eat like the top layer first yeah, yeah. and create that little crater and then throw the pulled pork in there and you can <laughs> and then you go to town and like if you're feeling really so crazy, good. like if the cornbread's like super moist that day, you cut that cornbread in half, you layer the mac and cheese and pulled pork inside, and then you have yourself a little cornbread. Oh, little slider. A little slider. Oh, oh man. Dude, I miss barbecue oh, so much. I miss, yeah, I miss eating whatever getting sad. I wanted. Yeah, getting me sad too, thinking about it right now. Me too. One of my favorite experiences ever was when it was actually peak quarantine. It was when me, you, and Parker went. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. We took, I remember that. We, yeah, we mobbed the Nissan down there. That it was Ultima's super put crowded. In some miles. That Ultima's put in some miles. We was taking that thing to SD. Probably going to take it there again. Again. You know? <laughs> I remember when we were eating. Yeah. Dude, this is how committed we are to barbecue and how 
much we love Doc. We were driving to Doc's location when it was peak quarantine, so there was no indoor dining, and this was peak summer. This was like July. We were eating barbecue on the hood of the Nissan. That's what I was. Gonna say. That's what I was uh, in 105 degree weather. That single handedly was like one of my favorite days. That takes like, commitment, although, right? It takes commitment, but and like appreciation. Appreciation, absolutely, because. Uh, I want to say Parker got the three meat, but we, you know we always get our traditional four, four meat. meat. Finish combo. it or not, we're getting that shit. Let's tell right? them what our order is. So we go four meat combo. We go so at first it was what pulled pork, rib, brisket, and what else? Pulled, we, no, we would get double double, of, uh, double rib, pulled pork, brisket. Yeah, and or we might have got double rib, double pulled pork, brisket, and um, double mac. Geez, yeah, something like that. But it got to a point where like. Me and Jace became obsessed with pork because if you have a deep appreciation bar- for barbecue like we do, there's just something about some yeah. pulled, some delicious pulled yeah. pork yeah. and some pork ribs. Yeah. So it got to a point where we we're going double pulled pork, double ribs. And when we eat the ribs, guys, we are cleaning the meat off the bone. Off the bone. Off All the, bone. the fat. All the fat. And that's why we gained 60 pounds over quarantine. And even that's why little, I even, weighed 260. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't near the amount of an equivalency to like fat or whatever, but that we ate a large abundance of cartilage as well. Exactly. Cause the flavor's so good. I'm not spitting. That and it's, out, and it's cooked in a smoke pit for dude. He's going more than four hours. He's Way going more. Eight so that 12. the fat ends up or the cartilage ends up having a fatty texture. Exactly. So you just think it's fat <laughs> until you start chewing and you're like, Oh wait, this is a little this bit might of cartilage. Be cartilage. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah. It's That's already okay. chewed. You just <laughs> throw the bone. Like, yeah. But man, one of the funniest bro. moments was when me and Parker went and we were sitting uh, on the hood and we were all eating our barbecue and it got to a point where we were full of shit. Nobody else in the freaking parking lot no. at all. It was just Doc and the crew. And out of nowhere, like Parker <laughs> Parker glances over and there's that. You talking that, about yeah, that? Yeah. But there's like the a tweaker. bearded, a bearded uh, fella and <laughs> he was a bigger guy, but like shorter, maybe like 5'7, probably about 170, 175 pounds, but no muscle. So he's a uh, heavy, yeah. heavier, stockier guy. And he's like walking kind of towards us, but like angling, like here's the car and he's like veering his way over, or at least it felt like. But he like gets close. He's having a conversation with himself, and out of nowhere, Parker's like, "Bro, who's, who's he, he talking, talking to?" to? And I was like, "I was like, his, he's talking to his mind, mind his <laughs> yeah. mind, bro." He's, that's and what, that's he what immediate, drugs do. Yeah, Death. yeah. And he immediately takes a sharp turn, and we never see him again. But man, that was a little nerve wracking. Yeah, for a yeah, second. yeah. That was the crazy thing about like those doc trips, like yeah. during the summer during peak corn. You're protected like, indoors. Yeah, you're protected indoors, but out outdoors, forget about it. You got to deal with all the environmental forget about it. factors. And that is, I mean, that's Maze Boulevard exit. I mean, if if anybody out there knows what that is, it's a yeah. rough area of Modesto. Rough area of Modesto. Modesto has its parts. Every every, every city has every its city. parts, but like even more so in that specific area in terms of Modesto, for sure. Exactly, it's, bro. It's, it's it gets gets a little rough over there. Bro. <laughs> exactly, yeah. bro. You know what yeah. I was so hyped about this past weekend when all our boys were down is we got to eat pizza, bro. Yeah, not just any pizza. Uncle Vito's. Uncle V. Toes, I will God, say, God, dude, I, no, no, no. We, I wasn't even supposed to expose this shit, dude. Uncle Vito's was just the first time. Yeah. <laughs> it was just the first time. <laughs> that was like a little appetizer compared to what we did Sunday afternoon before these dudes left. Yeah. We went down to this place right here by our apartment complex called Steve's. Rancho Steve's yep, Pizza. Rancho Cordova Steve's Pizza. It's and actually like a gentleman named Steve. Yeah, his name's Steve. And the family's always, the family works family it. Family owned, family grumpy. operated. Yeah. They're always pissy mood. Yeah. But we pulled up. Our friend uh, Busco, Jacob, he orders an extra large pizza. We order wings, like 20 wings. 20 wings. We dust, it's, we dust it. Me, Rob, Bariga... Christian and Busco. So there's yeah. five of us, right? Five of us. Five big guys. We're yeah. all 200 plus. 200 plus. I might have been 198 Friday, but Sunday Sunday midway through that pizza is about 20, 209, <laughs> 210. Legit, you're not you know? from all the drinks <laughs> and all the binge eating. Jesus. That, oh my God, bro. But yeah, yeah, we dust these 20 wings, we dust the pizza, and we're like, man, we're all still hungry. So I get up, I go over to the cast register, and I order 40 wings. I get 20 buffalo 20 barbecue and then i get a pint of ranch and we go in these wings are probably like an ounce at most so they're small wings but i'm just all of us we're just diving in clearing bones clearing bones tossing tossing and it was absolutely crazy and i'm not gonna lie i felt good after that meal it wasn't until later where i was like yeah 
that meal was an absolute fucking mistake. It was a mistake because it was what, like noon? I noon. think it was noon, and we went and trained. Trained, yeah. Day. We went to Gold and went like to go we train. We hit arms. And I felt disgusting. Right. Felt could you disgusting. imagine? Like, I don't think I could have hit any other body part. Like, maybe abs, but like arms was like, I was like, dude, what am I doing here? I look like shit. <laughs> We look like shit. We do not belong in this gym My right now. My guts hanging out. I'm all bloated. Yeah, Jesus Christ. I was like, thank God there's no freaking chicks there, dude. Because we. Know. <laughs> My gut and I, my oh, my wardrobe was. I needed to do laundry. I know, like I'm I was wearing, wearing some small ass clothes. <laughs> yeah, I'm like wearing an outfit I haven't worn in years. I was like, damn, dude, this is a flashback to the 2016 bulks. God damn. Wearing t-shirts that make me look fucking three times bigger than what I really am. It's like, yeah, dude, yeah. But ba- but back to us eating those wings, bro. Like, um, it was one of those things. You know our appreciation for f- for food competition. Do you remember? Like, I don't know what urged me to start doing it. But I noticed that as I was taking bites, I was like, dude, I am cleaning these yeah. wings with ease. With ease. And it, it ha- I know it had something to do Felt with it. Felt like I was were- in a competition, like a wing eating contest. That's how I was eating the con- wings. And the, a majority of them, they were either the flats where you could just hunk, pull them out. Or you could do the wheel with yeah, the other the ones. Wheels. The wheels. The wheel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the wheels on the wings fucking get consumed. Bro. I know, bro. You know what I mean? It like, got to a point, too, where like we had that pint of ranch and nobody was really using it except me and you. So I'd grab the wing. And I just dunked the entire wing in the ranch and like I was saucing the wing up with the ranch. And I was like just devouring them, bro. Oh, wings and ranch were fucking Especially great. like not just like any ranch. Like because I, I always grew up like Bottle of Hidden Valley, Bottle of Hidden. And we were eating a lot of no, Caesars, Yeah, right? this is homemade. Homemade ranch. ranch. And I didn't really appreciate homemade ranch per se until I ate at fucking Naples downtown Disney. And they had that Italian ranch dog that was like, you know, they it was like traditional, right? So they have like, it's like Italy style pizza. There's like Naples and Italy and shit. Yeah. And they're like rectangular, rectangular mm-hmm. pieces as opposed to the triangular the, the ones. Tri- and yep. they're very thin because it's all about quality cool. and flavor. <laughs> <laughs> like you're not here to get fat. You're here to appreciate you're, what the fuck yeah, you're about you're to eat. Yeah, you're here to appreciate the flavor. And I remember like... <laughs> Like I was holding it like a little Caesar slice, and it just curves over. You get ranch right here. <laughs> <laughs> you, you gotta get like fold it up and just. <laughs> yeah, you gotta eat it. it like a yeah. But I remember that first bite. Like, don't get me wrong, pizza there is phenomenal. It's just like a regular cheese pizza. Yeah. Whatever. I think it might add pepperoni or whatever. But once I took a bite into that ranch, and I saw how well, and it kind of made me understand, right? Because I was like, dude, store bought ranch, like regular restaurant ranch. Like it needs, it, it can't go longer than a couple of days. No, like you need your regular. Yeah, you have to, range. you have to make it in batches. Right, like that's the, like, ba- the batches expire, so yeah. it's like you got to consume it within a certain time threshold. Absolutely, and I think there's a certain standard as to like when it gets made and how it gets made. It's like, you know, your that supervisor back there is grilling your ass. Yeah, you better fucking dude, keep ranch yeah. flowing, dog. But yeah, bro, that ranch Estes was phenomenal. But I want to move on to another topic. This past weekend, uh really made me start to question is like how does alcohol and bodybuilding go hand in hand it really can't right well i mean it was one of those things where we kind of saw the transition take effect um because you know like drinking high school right like junior senior year whatever playing football but never never it never became like a frequency until like you know, we were 21 and we, yeah. just, you, you get, you get drinks at restaurants, go to the bars, go to the, bars, go to the clubs. clubs. It's, it's like an abundance of things at your disposal. And it's like, we live in Sacramento where the food scene is immaculate. It's endless. The downtown scene. I mean, aside from COVID is pretty damn solid. Yeah, it's pretty good. And, um, you know, it's nice to like go downtown and like see people and, and socialize interact with people. I think that was like our main attraction, but it was interesting to me to see, especially because on both of us, we've been training for so long, like yeah. how it, and we never really drank before, never, except the never. occasional, like okay. post Friday, post game Friday night, like drink outs at the buddy's house or whatever. But yeah. like, as far as like frequency, it wasn't really like a, a factor or element in my life. Yeah. Like I'll say I'm an occasional drinker now. Yeah. But like a couple months comparis- ago, that wasn't the case. In comparison to like when we started training leading up until whenever the hell it was or yeah. we transitioned and we're like, okay, let's open this up a little more, mm. which was primarily on bulks and maintenance because mm. that's when it's okay, yeah. you know? Um, if I, you know, like clients, I would advise like, you know, don't drink if you're trying to, you're at that crunch time to get lean. Exactly. But it was like, it was interesting to see how it transitioned from us implementing that into play as yeah. far as like, 
how does it transition for me and how does it transition for you as far as like how how genetics come into play as far as like what it does yeah like i was saying alcohol wasn't really a factor for me until recently but i did notice especially because me and jace were drinking a little bit during the cut and there was one weekend in particular where me jace we went out with some of our friends alex max and our boy scott and we all just got blasted and got super faded and me and Jason, low brow hitter, yeah, bro. We, we got back to the apartment and <laughs> we door dashed like 50 jack-in-the-box tacos and i was like i woke up while well, i was thinking that night i was like all right these are great but towards the tail end of eating that meal i was like i can't be doing this no more we can't be doing this like alcohol and bodybuilding especially if you're trying to be serious about improving your physique and getting lean it just doesn't go hand in hand. Yeah. I want to touch on that really just real quick. Like <laughs> that whole lift ride home for us. And then we get back up. We're like, all right, we're obviously going to eat something, which is our main problem with food, by the way. hundred percent is or our main problem with alcohol, rather, by the way, is it's a gateway to food for us. Absolutely. hundred percent. And with how easy it is and how the accessibility, how it's just radically improved over the years, radically shout out. Yeah. But uh, as far as like. You could go on Grubhub. You go on DoorDash. It gets delivered to your door. It's you, at the tip of your finger. Bro. Yeah, you can just you walk ten feet from want. the couch and boom. What? And 10 it comes feet from right the couch out of your to the elevator downstairs, and they're right there with your DoorDash it's bag. Jace or Rob? Which one? <laughs> it's like, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have a but good night, bro. <laughs> I was uh, <clears throat> heavily intoxicated that night, as we both were. Uh, but it got to the point where I was sitting on the couch. And I was just sitting, like normal sitting. And <laughs> I wasn't even like laid down or anything. But I had fallen asleep like shortly after Rob confirmed the order. Yeah. And I, I like remember him confirm the order. And then out of nowhere, like I remember him, I remember you do the order. I, I like, you knock yeah, out. I doze There's off. Like and then I immediately, I wake up to you like shaking. Yeah. Me. <laughs> I'm like, and then I immediately, no, no, no. I immediately like come to fruition. And I was like looking around. And then I was like, Oh, <laughs> what's like, that smell? And then it's right in between us, bro. Two like, bags, two of bags, Jack in the box tacos. With tacos and hot sauce, yeah. and like me and Jace, we don't even grab we each, plates. Me and Rob each had a bag a of bag. tacos. Yeah, we don't even grab plates or no. anything. We just sit Started there on the eating. couch and start tearing open wrappers and start devouring. And that was kind of when I realized, like, I, I that's when I like really was able to put things in perspective. Like, man, I have been doing this for so many years. I've tried to do it at such a high level, but man, like maybe I'm just not disciplined enough to do this shit. Exactly. You know, part of it is cause like we have other obligations yeah, and yeah. things of that nature. You could blame it on just about anything, but as far as like how much respect we have and like where we, where we want to take it yeah, was, and, where we like, be. and where we want to be it was just like oh my god i remember after eating the tacos like waking up the next morning and there was a point during eating the tacos where i opened one up i don't know why i did this you can't do this especially when you're drunk but it's uh you open up the taco and you get a glance at that meat and you're just like what in the hell am i putting in my that body? shit looks like canned cat food bro yeah that meat i felt like a, i felt like a damn healthy, si yeah. i felt like a damn siamese bro yeah it's not healthy for you whatsoever and those tacos are infested with grease and old oil like yeah, bro i dude. was fucked up after eating yeah. those tacos and that made me realize sorry about that guys um memory card got full when the video stopped and this is actually an issue that me and jace have been discussing since starting this podcast uh this start starting this podcast platform is like we have to get a new camera because right now our camera it's a dslr camera so that means there's a 30 minute recording limit and when you're just having like fluid conversation, it's kind of like a little nerve wracking and anxiety. Like, oh no, we're going to go over the time. Like there was one, one time I remember we were trying to, it was during, I think we we're just doing a test run or we we're yeah. doing something. I can't, yeah. I can't necessarily remember, but we were talking for maybe like 20 minutes before yeah. we realized that the camera wasn't even recording wasn't even because recording. the recording limit stopped. Right. And that's something that like, you know, we, we like to be open about our growing pains. Yeah. Let's be real. And like, this is a. This is one of those things where, like, for podcasting, it's like a no-brainer. You have to have an unlimited recording time yeah. with the camera. And um, I feel like we're good at recognizing it now. But like you said, it, sometimes it throws off the flow. And, like, yeah. I, can't even, I can't even remember what I was talking about before, like, you know, your mind races. At the beginning, I'm like, all right, yeah. I can, I'm, I'm flowing. Like, I don't, I'm not worrying about it. But towards the tail end, I know, like, okay, 
we've been talking for some time. Right. That 30 yeah. minute mark is coming up, bro. It's, it's, it's coming to get you. And it comes fast. Yeah. It it catches comes very up to fast. You. And then it's like, bam, it's in the, hits. Boom. And you're like, fuck. Yeah. That sucks. Like a slap in the face. <laughs> yeah. Like, ah. You stop talking, like, you get up. You get up and get all mad. And then Shake you, it off. And then you like, <laughs> because of like, just how we are and we like to prevent uh, present stuff in a professional manner. We try to just pick up on where we left where off. We but left sometimes off. it's hard because we talk about such numerous things and we get off a, a little off track and we go into depth and we get a little carry weight with things. So it's kind of hard to keep track. And yeah. it's just like some anxiety on my mind that I don't want to have. So I think we're going to be upgrading to another camera pretty soon here. Very soon. It's definitely, it's something that uh, we've been wanting to do for a while. Yeah. Um, I really like what Sony's doing with, with their production and kind of the overall build of their the camera. color science is crazy, man. It's very crazy. And I think that you could get really creative with editing as far as like pictures in Lightroom and editing video in Adobe Premiere. It would, just be, it would be fun to explore. Yes, it's a pricey camera, but there's a lot of good things in this world that are pricey, bro. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? And honestly, we'll do anything for you guys as long as we can yeah. keep producing high quality content. And you guys are enjoying it. We're satisfied. Yeah. I'll drop as much money as I have to. Absolutely. And it's like, you know, we enjoy doing this, doing this so much, man. I mean, especially this podcast, the launch of this podcast was, was so amazing for us. And it, it, it something that we look forward to. I look forward to, you know, I, you know, Rob goes to school full time. I work full time. We don't see a lot. We don't see each other a lot during the day. And it's like, it kind of sucks, you know, cause it's like, I wish I could I wish we could grind all day. Exactly. You know, there, like, it'd be a huge difference. And of course, that's what we're working towards. Yeah, and we have, some, we have some future plans. We'll keep them disclosed for now. But we do have some future plans that me and Jace think are going to be very beneficial for, for, the, for the channel, for our content creation, and just for the overall growth. And we're very excited to... To adventure on that pretty yeah, soon. Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, always, taking it, taking it slow. It's a process. Yeah, it's a process and, uh, for sure. We're just kind of taking it day by day. But back to uh, the Jack in the Box tacos, I suppose, man. <laughs> yeah. I can. I tapped out about twenty, about twenty through. I was like, Nah, dude, this ain't this ain't happening. My stomach started gurgling. Yeah. Was, but then I, it was the next day when I woke up and I like had that realization because that, that is when we drank at Goldfields and they had that shitty tequila. Bro, there's Don something Julio, about. Shitty tequila, like low quality or Jose Cuervo tequila. Dude, when Jose you, Cuervo. When you drink that shit, you have some of the most gnarly hangovers known to mankind. It's terrible. Jose Cuervo is disgusting, As opposed to when you drink bro. like Don Julio, like tequila Smooth. pineapples. That's mine and Jace's drink when that's we go the out. Drink. Like it's a $7 drink on average, but they get you fucked up. They get they do, they do get the job done in the time manner that... that Needs to happen. Exactly. And so uh, sometimes, you know, if I'm feeling a little bit adventurous, <laughs> I'll get a uh, the old sunrise, bro. Those yeah, are good the too. sunrise there is few, too. There's a few extra bucks because like the uh, downtown, I'm all about efficiency. I'm like, okay, uh, I'm trying to keep it really methodical right. here. Seven dollars will get me one drink. I'll be feeling good. I can... I could sit on it for a while too. Like yeah, 40 you can go downtown and drop some I'm, money. Yeah, because I'm trying... My whole objective downtown is I don't even like drinking in general, but I love... I love the social friends. factor when you're drinking with the friends. Social, and, and just like I love when you take it slow and like you eventually get there. But getting there is one of the is the funnest thing, right? Exactly. And so it's like I enjoy that aspect of things when it comes to socially drinking per se. But uh, yeah, like the, sometimes I'll get a sunrise, but they both have to be Don Julio 1942. Absolutely. Most of the time, that's normally a staple at bars. I'll drink Patron, but I would prefer Don I, Julio. I prefer you know Don I mean, Julio. I think anybody would. If you're a true like the most tequila fanatic, clean tequilas, hundred percent, absolutely, hundred percent. Or I mean, even some Tito's. Tito's is all right. Sometimes yeah, Tito's too. is decent. The old Tito's. What's that, um, <laughs> what's that one bottle we got on New Year's, bro? It's like that, that Espelon, Espelon. Oh, the e the Epsilon tequila. Epsilon. That one, that's pretty that good one, too. That the black and orange yeah, logo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. one's a hitter. For that sure. one's like a mid a nice mid range hitter for sure. But, um, yeah, that 1800, man, it really messed me up. And in, in, uh, combination with those tacos, I really had to do some deep thinking, reflecting, breathing the next day. I was like, I was so like mentally just bogged and weighed down. Absolutely. I like, I, I felt like I had no control I, over my life. I feel I like just, me and you didn't even, cause we usually like try to do some type of active recovery on Sundays. Well, um, weekends are the only Saturday and Sunday are the only days where me and Rob have the whole day, like all days together. Uh, yeah, to like so like wake up, do cardio, do cardio, meals are dialed in, plan out content, train, plan, film content for the week. Yeah, but, browse um, topics. Like exactly. that's that's where a lot of the 
a like thinking pre-work, process. Yeah. Like the pre-work gets done leading into the week for sure. But um, I think that Sunday we didn't even get shit done. I think no. we just laid on the couch and like just chilled because we were just so jacked up from the from that night. Yeah. And it was terrible. And that's like when I just came to the real realization. I was like, we it's we got to end it. Yeah. And ever since that day until this past weekend, there that's we hadn't drank and it had probably been about what seven weeks, seven for to sh- eight weeks for sure, for sure. And it, it it was one of those things too where like. I hadn't been under 200 pounds in a long time, and I was re- a long time, bro. Long time. Like a, lo- a, re- a really long time. And when I'm, I'm so dialed in, like bulking, cutting throughout the years, you know, and it's like I got to a certain point where I'm so accustomed to being 185 every single summer. And in skipping that summer, it like psychologically really took a toll on me, especially being detrained and mm-hmm. dealing with quarantine and so many, one thing after another. And, you know, nobody even, nobody's training nobody. so it's, and everybody's, you know, all you see on Instagram are home workouts and it's like, I'm trying these home workouts. They, they suck. suck. It's like so demotivating. I, I couldn't do it. And, uh, I paid the price for it, but like getting back As into training, too. you know, seeing that one in the one nineties again, I'm like, mm. Oh my God, dude, it's so cool. And, uh, that's, I think like, that's why it messed me up psychologically so much is because I felt like I was back to square. Yeah. One. I felt like I was at like, square one. I was right? like, dude, I got to start yeah. all over. Like, all is, over. It, is this cut even worth going through? Should I, should we just give up and start bulking and cut again later? Right. It's like, right. And you, yeah. the fact that those thoughts like arise. Yeah. And I had to have a conversation with myself. I was like, yeah. listen up motherfucker. Right. Stay dialed in. You fucked up on the weekend. On That's mission. okay. Bounce back. Stay on track. Reach your goal and get there. Just don't deviate from the plan anymore. And and that's kind of what I what I wanted to touch upon too, as far as the whole um, alcohol type topic here is the fact that you know we've been training for so long, and although there were points in our life where we drank before, I think now there's a major awareness as far as like putting ourselves in check immediately. Yeah, because I think now we're old enough to conceptualize what alcohol really does to you. It can really fuck you up. It can really fuck you up. It can really fuck you up. And it's it's like, also too, like I love getting drunk yeah like, i do i like getting there slowly and having a good night and but like, especially I love if you're it. around like a crowd of people yeah. it's just i don't know like a crowd of drunk Ugh. people especially if they're cool drunks Ugh. like we had that one dude at lowbrow come up to us um what was his name brian brian, brian? yeah cool ass dude and cool like, ass dude you can't have com- like if he was sober i guarantee you he wouldn't have came up to us and had a, a 45 minute conversation but it's not because we're all drunk and we just had a great conversation conversation, <laughs> yeah. conversation. Like you just have a you just have conversations that usually don't happen usually yeah. don't happen when you're sober yeah and, and that's that's like one of the most beautiful things about like drinking downtown it's like running into people and then yeah you start to kind of not like get roped into it but like you start seeing the same people at the same places every right, weekend right. that's how it was at the park i mean i went to the park every friday night and saturday night for consecutive months right. probably like at least like four months three to four months and like just ways it just t- took a toll on me, bro. Like binge drinking, and that club life is unreal. Yeah. Like it, and like it doesn't pair well with bodybuilding. It got to a point where I was like, dude, I have to choose. Yeah, like I have to choose. Like, do I want to like do this or do this? Yeah. It's like because I'm I we were so locked in for so many years. It was like I I know I can't do both. I have a major awareness that I can't do yeah. both, and the level that. If I'm going to commit to, I'm not going to be half ass in this. No, no, no. If That's why a lot of Olympians, when they quit bodybuilding, they stop training. Yeah, exactly. Right? There's only a few that keep training. Dorian, Jay, and Ronnie. Ronnie Coleman. That segment. And Flex. Yeah, and Flex. But like, <laughs> There's a lot more. I just can't do Yeah. <laughs> Those are right? just the major ones. <laughs> the major ones, bro. The ones that we've at least that, influenced. Yeah, that, yeah, that have influenced us the but most. But I, I think regardless, like, although... We do like to partake in drinking. We enjoy it at times. We understand when it's okay and when we're able to do it. And we understand capacity Mm -hmm. uh, as far as what we're going to have to deal with following the amount we drink, how much food we eat throughout the gateway. Yeah, because no matter what, like, I don't know if it's just the alcohol or what. Sure, sure. When you get the drunkies, there's... Leads to the drunchies. Yeah, Yeah. there's no um, self-control. Yeah. You impose yeah. your will on you any fo- and on any food you want. That's perfect. Like that said. night, that Saturday night, we all went out. We <laughs> went to Denny's at five in the morning, and we got double cheeseburgers with seasoned fries and a shit ton of ranch. Dude, 
And that is the meal, dude. That's the meal. I remember like, <laughs> I remember gazing at your burger and like I had, cause we, me, you, and then I think did somebody else order a burger? Christian did. Christian, right? yeah. And, um, I had bitten into it and I immediately burnt the fucking top roof of my mouth. And I was like looking at piping hot. I was looking at bro. Like, yeah, like damn, <laughs> pimp, you know that snarl, yeah, right? And like, to, like it's kind of kind of cool inside no, your mouth. Off. No, bro, I was like, I was buzzing, and I was like, I started to get that snarl, but I was like gazing into my burger, and then I like glance up at you to like see <laughs> if it's the same thing. And all I see, bro, is your burger. Like the double burger is literally steaming. There's two gateways <laughs> of steam, and sure enough, you're doing that snarl like. And then there's a steam like rolling past your face, dude. There's just something about like, bro, like I said, when you're drunk, you just impose your will on the food. Like, you don't give a fuck if it's hot. You don't really care how it tastes. If it tastes good, that's fine. But when you're drunk, honestly, pretty much anything can taste good. Dude, cold pizza and cold ranch. Jesus. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. I can eat that. Phenomenal. I can eat cold Every night. Cold KFC smacks. Bro. Cold that. orange chicken, bro. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. Oh, yeah. You remember that, that yeah. fucking one time in high school where you were staying the night at my house, <laughs> you and Dante, and then like... <laughs> we, no, we were playing... We were plan- it was like 9 o'clock at night. I think, dude, this is... I don't even think we were driving. No, I don't think I so. I think we were like fif- 15, maybe it just turned 16. I think it was sophomore year. Sophomore year. And um, we're going into sophomore year, one of them. But you were, we were at the Catalina house. Bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. OG house. Bro, that, I remember there was one time where I was, we were moving you out of that house to go to Oregon and you had that U-Haul trailer and Omar's and tow your ass down there. And freaking, I was like loading up a washer in the U-Haul and I hit my head. Oh, fuck. So hard, I remember that bro. shit. I had a welt for yeah, like days, I remember that. bro. And Grandpa Jim was like, are you all right, yeah, buddy? Yeah, you all right, buddy. Yeah. Well, back to the orange chicken is like, yeah. um, we were all just super, super hungry for whatever reason right like, yeah. so like i just go in the fridge i open up the doors and it's just like a well we were planning where to go yeah eat, right? but i was like it's taking too long yeah, so i, I pulled out the tub I, I open up the fridge and i pull out this tub of uh orange chicken from costco now if you guys have never had the kirkland orange chicken so i highly suggest you try it out because it is phenomenal and i'm just eating it by the spoon well, your, cold. your ass is against the fridge like you're chilling yeah, like, right like you're that up. you're that uncle at like the barbecue with the plate like Legs crossed and you're eating. Yeah, right? yeah. And so you're at the, you had the Tupperware and you're right there. And I was right here and Dante is right here. And there was like one point where me and Dante looked at each other like, dude, are we about to go get some food? Because <laughs> this Tupperware was a big Tupperware. Yeah, there's probably like three pounds of orange chicken. <laughs> yeah, in there. we thought you were gonna kill it. I ate about half of it. Yeah, you know, you were at a good pace. Yeah, you, a, you were keeping a good pace. Yeah, that shit was phenomenal. It was phenomenal. But um, yeah, I think over the years we've like locked in a pretty solid system as far mm-hmm. as like balancing everything because like like at heart we li- we try our absolute best of course there's certain things that get in the way like a job or like yeah. school or like this and that and just whatever. other factors that we really can't control but at the end of the day it's when am i training what am i eating how much sleep am i getting exactly. like those factors are always and number it's, one it's and been like been that like since that. we're about 16 years old. Yeah, and alcohol is something that has been in the way. Yeah. And it's like, it's, it's that's one what, of those that's things. That's perfect, bro. Alcohol gets, was getting in the way. Getting in the way. And it's like, it's one of those things where it's like in life, right? You you have a goal that you want to get to, and there's certain detours along the way, and th- there has to be that tunnel vision where essentially either that de- those cars bounce off you or you just you just go past it. Right. You just go past it. You deviate from those detours. And like I think that's essentially what alcohol and other things come into play as far as like where we want to be eventually. They're kind of just stuff that's in the way. And mm-hmm. it's like, of course, like we have friends who drink as well. Yeah. Because we have it's a lot like, of, a majority of our friends don't really like do this fitness that's thing. The thing. That's the and thing. And like, so their lifestyle is a lot different than ours. Yeah. When you see Olympian bodybuilders, they're hanging out with other bodybuilders. Bodybuild. You know what I mean? Just because it's like more camaraderie and it's easier to just like hang out with people who do the same shit as you. But like me and Jace really just stay true to who we are and yeah. we really don't like, cut people out because no, they don't live a lifestyle I, that we live. And that's what I was afraid of too. And that's kind of why I think I lean towards drinking. Cause it's like, dude, I don't like, I, I hate, I hate when like f- people get pushed away that are in my life where it's yeah. like, cause I don't want to show up and have I don't some wanna, food. Yeah. I don't want to like go out and yeah. eat or go out and have drinks. I feel like some people take that the wrong way. Yeah. Yeah. 
And um, people talk about it too. I don't right? know. It's Bodybuilders just, it, talk about yeah, it. Yeah, and it's like peer pressure too. Like I don't know if I'm it around is. if I'm around all my boys and everybody's drinking, I kind of just feel obligated to drink. That's what happens. And you and I mean you have to. That's why you go in the first place. And yeah. it's like it's just it's just one of those things where I feel like it's just it's something that's in the way, but we kind of balance it based off like a certain motives you know yeah, like exactly. in our life as well but i think a lot of our friends like now especially since like we started the whole youtube channel like everybody knew we were serious about fitness but they didn't know we were serious about fitness to the extent to which we are but yeah we've always yeah. been this way we just really never voiced it like people just knew that we went to the gym like, exactly every day. exactly i knew we were dedicated but i don't think they realized like how methodical we were going to be as exactly. you know going to be being right now yeah. like as far as like carving out a future per se of yeah. like what we want to do and like everything, you know, funding our lives right now is something that's in the way f based off other things, you know, exactly. it's like, and it's like, I think when we, when I, when I really like sit back and think about it, like there's, there's going to be a point where like, that's going to be not a factor anymore. Mm -hmm. And it's like, and that's, you know, of course it's just goals you set in play just like anything. For yeah. Sure. I just feel like, um, people just learn to appreciate your lifestyle more when they see your commitment and dedication to it. As 100%. like I do, I do the same. Like all of for all of us, for all, all my friends, friends and yeah. just people who are around me. I, like yeah, friends I, that are fathers now. Yeah. It's like you it's know, crazy, it's, bro. It's that's crazy. crazy. Like it's crazy. Yeah, we have two two friends that are uh, one of our dearest friends. Our boy Dante is about to have a kid. Congratulations on that, bro. If you're congrats, watching this, brother. congrats. Going to see you this weekend. I freaking love you, man. Love you, brother. But it's just crazy, you know. And you just have to learn to appreciate and accept that people around you necessarily don't have the same view and they don't necessarily have the same desire to live the lifestyle that you're living but like our our cl exactly and that's perfectly said but i think our close friends would have like our close friends and our family that are like locked in right now like i feel like they understand and appreciate it the fact of like what we're doing and mm -hmm. what we're trying to do and i think that like um even if like even if they didn't they would still show us love still or show even, us even love. if we didn't like um, even if we like isolated all that to the mm -hmm. fullest, like the lifestyle and we were just like no alcohol, no fucking up on the diet, macro, 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 no, no training, training, no training, family visits, no, no family, family, yeah, dude, no we're family just dinners, locked in a cage, yeah. you know, like, like just a locked kid. in this apartment, going to the gym, fucking <laughs> just like some deranged animals. We don't pay rent. We just, live, we just live here. Dude. We live here and train, <laughs> right? Legit though. But, um, oh, man. let's go ahead and transition to our last topic. Yes. Um, and that's going to be refeed. So although like this weekend was a shitty weekend, kind of a shitty example of a refeed, but yeah. I feel like weekends like this can be beneficial because like I had mentioned earlier, they help reset you psychologically. But not only that is I felt like I was hitting a plateau in the diet to where I, it was getting hard to kind of hit my, my, my weight loss goal uh, weekly. And I kind of felt I was pretty stalemated. And after this weekend, the weight started flying off again. I'm making progress. And I just feel like it kind of reset my metabolism. And it's kind of just sped things back up. Because I, I would imagine me and you were pretty depleted, depending on how we feel. Because we didn't take a deload this cut. No. And we hadn't really had any <clears throat> refeeds for a couple weeks. We hadn't. And I think, I think that was the main problem. And I feel like we would um, get in our head vigorously as far as when we fully committed on like, all right, we're having a refeed. It was like, okay, but we're not going to eat our, we're going to have breakfast and then we're going to wait until the refeed and to have like a big meal. And that's how I always approached it in the mm -hmm. past. Like I was like, I ne I didn't even know what a refeed was when I first started. I was just doing it by accident. Yeah, like, okay, here. I'm going to have a cheat meal. I didn't yeah. know. I didn't it, know that it had actual benefit. Right. And I, I didn't know that it could actually have benefit to your training and like a metabolism kickstart. Exactly. Like you were saying. And I think that is a huge deal and that's very, very important. And I think that's why a lot of coaches who are getting their athletes ready for shows and, and stuff in that aspect is a huge phenomenon now as far as competition um, comes into play. I think refeeds are like they're just such a, a such a common thing because there's so much benefit to improve and benefit mm -hmm. to them. Like they the become, guys that are winning shows, yeah, it's like, they become oh, an essential factor when you're, especially when you're like deep in a cut. Um, I think we're eight or nine. I think we're nine weeks. I think mm -hmm. this is the nine week, right? Nine week. Mark. And even we're nine more weeks in on this. And even more importantly, like it's it's all predicated on like conserving as much muscle from the bulk as possible. And like when you notice you're depleted. Of course, they should be regular, right? Just like mm. 
you know, Sunday, you should, you should be able to put in the work during the week so that you can have the refeed. I think that's why it's very important too. Cause you, <clears throat> you have something to look forward to at the end of the week. Right. It, like it gets you through all that monotonous, boring, dull eating so that you can enjoy the refeed. And then that kick starts you back up to get through the week again. And exactly. like, there's so many of those weeks until there's like a certain point where it's like, okay, I've reached my goal weight. Here we go. Exactly. Now I'm back in maintenance and the food is more lenient and mm -hmm. you can still have a refeed. Like maintenance is glorious. Maintenance sure. is glorious. I don't even like consider the refeeds that I have or the cheap meals I have on maintenance, like cheap meals. It's just, Absolutely I just, re I just replace it yeah. with a meal that I would have, um, a, a general meal I would have. Yeah. Um, but when did you, when did you realize that like refeeds were so beneficial? Like when, because I feel like at the beginning we had we were having refeeds by mistake for sure. But mm -hmm. when did you like realize like, oh, man, this refeed is really benefiting me? So that's kind of a little different for me because like I haven't really committed myself to an extreme cut as I have now. Yeah. But I kind of always like I stay up to date on research and I stay up on up to date on like what coaches are doing with prepping their clients. Yes. So as far as like self-appreciation for a refeed, I would say I haven't like I didn't know that the benefit to my own body as of recently when we were like doing this extreme cut probably past quarantine because we tried to cut so many times but so many psychologically times. i just wasn't there wasn't there we got a quarantine and then when i committed to i realized like i started getting depleted i was getting lethargic i wasn't really getting any good workouts i wasn't having a pump so we had a refeed and i think that was when we had ordered denny's and like we ate it that saturday night sunday i woke up feeling great monday I had a phenomenal workout crushing it crushing like, it for like the first like monday through wednesday like i felt phenomenal and then like everything kind of just started to stabilize again i was like oh okay that's how refeed is meant to work yes like it's it you're singing it sending an influx of higher of a of higher fats higher carbs kind of the same protein maybe lower protein but higher fat and higher carbs which are two things that you manipulate during a cut so when you kind of influx those things it kind of just brings your levels back to normal or a little higher than what they were. And then it takes a couple of days for them to stabilize out. And I think that's when you start to really realize the benefits of a refeed. Absolutely. And I think that's so perfectly said because I, I think when I realized it myself, it was, it was always like that Denny's meal is so good, but I think the way it benefits the training in the following week, it's like, Oh my gosh, I had such great fats. I had good bread, brioche yeah. bun, great carbs. I had, some nice fatty cheese. Yeah. I had some good carbs with the fries. You know, like I, it's just such a good meal to have. And it sits so good yeah. because it's not like your body is like not used to having so much like good food to get into. Yeah, it, like you know? foods that you enjoy. Foods eating. that you enjoy and foods that like fill you up and could be put to use because you're already pretty lean and you're regularly eating good. So that food gets put to use in the gym. Absolutely. And I think that's, that's like when someone's depleted, it's like, all right, dude, you need, you yeah. need a refeed, go crush it in the gym. Exactly. Right? And, and like, any good coach that has been uh, not even just prepping clients, just training clients and helping people with weight loss goals, Yes. any good coach will be able to recognize that and be able to implement you with the refeed. Now, refeed is not where you go out for pizza, a full. Yeah, you go out and have a whole pizza. You go out and have a box of cookies. You yeah. go out and have cheeseburgers. It's like it's one meal. Like So I think that's the misconception that people have. Like They think of a, a refeed or a cheat meal as a cheat day. Yeah, it's, it's like, a misconception yeah. we used to have. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that's something we had to correct because that was kind of hindering. It, not kind of. It was really hindering yeah. our progress. The cut, the cut is is all nearly un unsuccessful. Exactly. Sure. Absolutely. That's what it leads to. So I think that's a misconception that when people talk about refeeds or cheat meals, that's something that, especially if you're working with somebody who doesn't really know anything about dieting, yeah. you have to explain to them what it is. Yeah. Because if not, you can have a client really fuck up on their diet and set themselves back a couple of weeks. Yeah. Like remember Patrick Moore, we were yeah, watching exactly. a mu muscle and strength video on him and he had a client uh, that was prepping for a show. So mm -hmm. like as a coach, you would think, like, as a veteran coach, it's like, okay, this person's prepping for a show. I instructed them to have a refeed. And this man, this client, whoever he was, thought his refeed, mind you, this guy is actively competing, thought right. his refeed was a transition to his normal diet. Yeah. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Like, bro, you are taking your body to the lowest body fat percentage you could stand on. And now and you, you just, think you're transitioning yeah. to some fucking burgers and pizza. You're On a daily basis, you're crazy. Conceptualize, yeah. brother. <laughs> yeah, and now you have to like go through a full week of gruesome yeah. training and a, a severe caloric decline just to get you back to where you were prior to fucking up on 
you know, where you have that misconception on what a refeed is. <laughs> well, we know all about that. Bro. Yeah, dude, I know. <laughs> I feel like that's something me and you dealt with tremendously, like post quarantine, like when we first yeah. started training again, and we like, and we realized the that joint kinks. Yeah, yeah, and we realized that we were like extremely overweight. Um, I just think psychologically, we weren't, we weren't committed to the cut. So like we were having all these shitty meals. We were door dashing almost every day, and every we're day. like, oh, we're still eating. We're still going to get semi clean. Yeah, well, compared to how we were, yeah, it yeah. was kind of clean. It was kind of like, clean. We're, we're having like wholesome but, like, meals. But we were thinking like, oh, we're oh, going to get lean, lean eating like this. Hell no. Absolutely we got healthy. Not. We got healthy, but, but we were not getting lean. No, being looking healthy. And I lost the shredded. excess fat, but right. I was still fat. Fat, thick. Yeah. Thick boy, Thick boy season, bro. <laughs> right? But, uh, yeah, I think I think refeeds have absolutely benefited us, benefited us more than we'll ever know. And I think moving forward, progressing as we continue to progress with our physique, because we always kind of implement things and play like that, is always looking to progress. <clears throat> I think refeeds have enabled us to mentally and physically pro- progress on our cuts. Absolutely. For sure. And I think they will for years to come if we choose to go down that bulking road again. I know it's exactly. gonna be a tough choice to make, bro. Tough choice to make. Especially if we decide to do a dirty bulk. I yeah. honestly we'll probably only do a dirty bulk if we do it for the channel just to show people what a how our dirty bulks used to be like yeah. back in the day. That's what I'm saying. But I think if I'm above fifteen percent body fat, I probably not gonna bulk. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, bro. That's I'm just I'm gonna saying. stay in maintenance, stay fairly lean throughout the year. But if we decide to embark on that journey again, it's going to be a lengthy one, huh? And people are going to see what a dirty bulk is really like. What a dirty bulk is really like every aspect dialed in, but man, uh, oh my gosh, I think at that, on that note, bro, it's time to go train some back. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Thank uh, you guys so much for yeah. tuning in, bro. Uh, I appreciate it so much. We appreciate it more than you'll ever know. Uh, although we're filming this on Wednesday, it's going to drop. Friday, Friday morning at 10 a.m. Turn on the notifications because we're dropping one per week religiously. We're not going to miss a week. I don't care if we're dead tired. Exactly. Stuff's going on. Uh, we're really going to commit to this. And for the people that in really enjoyed this episode, drop a like. Hit that and hit, subscribe and button. Hit those comments, guys. Hit those comments. It helps the channel, channel out tremendously. Turn on post notifications, as Jay said. Subscribe. And until then, we'll see you guys in the next one. See you guys in the next video. Peace. Peace.